This is the new Dacia Duster. It looks similar to the old one. It's got similar dimensions, similar prices, but it's really the second generation of the cheapest SUV on the market. Dacia is a Romanian brand which we know well in Eastern Europe thanks to Dacia 1300, which happened to be a Renault 12. In the 1960s, Romanian authorities decided they wanted a car for the people and Renault's offer won. The thing was that Renault 12 was not ready for production yet, so the French offered tools to make Renault 8, which became Dacia 1100. Years of cooperation led to Renault taking over Dacia in the late 20th century. Since then, Dacia became better recognized among European clients, albeit as a budget brand. In some regions of the world where Dacia is not necessarily known, or where people may have trouble with placing Romania on the map, Dacia is sold under Renault brand, hence Renault Duster, for example in the Middle East or South America. Enough history and now let's talk about the car. At first glance this really looks like a facelift and probably some brands would call it that. Modified grille and headlights, different lamps in the back, new safety systems to keep up to date with legal requirements. In order to see what really changed, I had to go back to my 2014 review of the facelifted first generation duster. We'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, steering column now has reach and rake adjustment. So that's new. And yes, it's an option. But the driving position is still far from perfect. I can't stretch my legs because the steering column does not reach this far back. And moving the seat forward results in me hitting my knee when I get in. Good thing I'm only 175 centimeters tall or short for those of you who like to point that out. Anyway, sliding seat sliding mechanism grinds like in a rusty farm machine, but the seat height adjustment is now variable rather than a zero one affair like in the previous generation. And there is now also, this is an option by the way, and uh, now there is also optional lumbar support adjustment so the seats are less uncomfortable. There is also a captain's armrest, which, like in the Opel Mokka, falls too low to do what it's been designed for. In fact, it only obstructs access to the seatbelt buckle. Does it still stink inside? That was one of the first questions I received about this car on social media. It's my pleasure to report plastics inside the Duster no longer stink. Hyundai i30 interior stinks. Duster doesn't. The next noticeable change is the gearbox. In the first generation Duster I kept putting the car into third instead of fifth and into fourth instead of sixth. Here I only can't find first gear, and when in first gear, the car likes to stall. Radio, or in this case infotainment system, has also been repositioned. In the old generation, it was located down by the gear lever, which forced you to look down to see the way. Now the screen is at the right height without being a tablet, which seems to irritate many of my viewers. Along with the infotainment system, there is now also a reversing camera and parking sensors, making the car easier to park around town. Infotainment system is easy enough to use, but you'll probably be better off with a smartphone anyway. Also, you can save yourself two grand and go for the basic petrol engine. Factory installed LPG is an option available in some markets. Speaking of the engine, this is a 1.5, 110 horsepower diesel, which powers Renaults, Nissans and even Mercedes cars. Realistically, it uses between 5 and 5.5 5 liters per 100 kilometers combined. Above 110 kilometers per hour, it's out of breath, but then driving above 100 kilometers per hour, 
it gets loud inside, sound insulation was poor and remains poor. Also steering is for the relaxed driver who doesn't need to hurry. Should he need to take a shortcut, duster can be had with all-wheel drive, which costs about two grand more than a front-wheel drive car like this one. Automatic gearbox is available only on front-wheel drive cars and costs about 1500 euro. Assuming you're not planning any serious off-roading, you should be fine with front-wheel drive, as 21 cm ground clearance should prevent you from damaging the undercarriage. Suspension is not particularly quiet, but tall sidewall tires should be fine on potholes. Sure, the cockpit is full of hard plastic, there is a place for your smartphone and a completely useless cup holder, glove box is deep but flat, you wanted a cheap car and cheap car you are getting. There, there isn't, no, I wanted to say there is sufficient leg room here in the back, however in this sitting position where I can actually stretch my legs but I can't reach the steering wheel, uh, there isn't much space in the back. If I move this seat forward to sort of have my legs bent a bit more and then perhaps reach the steering wheel, uh, there would be sufficient space for two adults on shorter trips, possibly even three adults because this is actually quite, uh, quite broad. Anyway, uh, if you're going for a short trip like up to maybe one hour or something, you'll be fine. Now, there is no dedicated 12 volt socket, however, there is one here in the boot. So, uh, excellent French engineers thought that this is the way to pull the cable from there to here if you need to charge something. And there are no dedicated cup holders as such in the back, however, there are some here between the front seat. Well, calling it a cup holder is a bit optimistic. It's it's a, it's a, it's a hole where you would put some coins normally, but uh, for French and Romanian designers, this this constitutes a, a cup holder. There is no armrest, unfortunately, but uh, there are pockets in the backs of the front seats, and uh, I think they are free. Something that uh, some car manufacturers will make you pay for. Seats in the second row fold to create a flat ish no it's not really flat is it loading area the spare wheel is now mounted below the car not inside the boot boot volume is 445 liters VDA in front wheel drive version 376 liters with all wheel drive Dacia duster prices start at 11 and a half thousand euro for a car which doesn't get any options Take it up two trim levels and you can drive a decently specced car. This comfort model starts at 15,700 euro and has about two grand worth of options on it. Realistically, you can drive a front wheel drive duster with air conditioning for 14,000. A fully loaded duster costs less than 21 grand. You won't find a cheaper SUV this size with this spec. More comfortable? Definitely. Because Dacia Duster is not a car for long journeys, it's more of a tool to deal with your everyday routine around where you live or work. Short weekend trips? Fine. Vacation with family? I suggest you think twice. And what are you looking for in a new car? Is price the deciding factor or maybe you pay attention to other things? Or maybe for that kind of money you'd consider a second-hand but more comfortable car? Let me know in the comments section below, subscribe if you haven't, share with people who are looking for a new car, click the bell icon to get notifications every time I post new episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.